Let's do the second question. Let's, so let's get rid of all this information, except for the stuff that we knew that wasn't related to the problem for the first, uh, for the first question, right? So, let's just clear this up. Also, when you're doing geometry, super important that if you, when you're starting out, do the stuff in pencil because you're going to end up erasing a lot of things. If you did this in pen, if you do every single problem in pen, uh, when you move on to the second part of a problem, you're going to have to recreate the original. And every time you do a carbon copy of something, every time you copy down uh, something from one place, there's more chances of an error. So you don't want to continuously rewrite the same thing. What you want to do is lay out the problem and solve for all the different parts of the question on your base. Okay? It's just basically making carbon copies. If you make copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, you end up losing um, the, the, um, the details. Okay? And that's exactly the same way it works with math. So let's go to part two. If CE is Q, and this line, by the way, up here between the two letters means if line CE is Q, then solve for AB and AE. So let's figure out where AC is, AE is, AE, Q. So from here to here, they're telling us this is Q. Okay. We want to solve for AB. Here's AB. And we want to solve for AE. AE. So we want to go back here and solve for this guy as well. Let's put a question mark there and let's put this in upright question mark. Okay. So CE is Q. Now, what was our relationship? This guy was equal to this guy, and we knew, unfortunately I erased it, but we knew, I shouldn't have erased it, that this guy was equal to this guy because D was the midpoint of B and E. So if that's the length, that's the length, it's the same length, right? Now take a look at this. If that's the same length as that, this guy is the same as that. So this guy is the same as that. So if we put a tick here, this guy breaks down into the same piece as this. So the length here must be equal to the length there. And this is the main thing that you have to realize to be able to solve the second part of this question. This guy was the same length as that guy. And if you can break this guy into two pieces, then you break this guy into two equal pieces. And this guy would equal that guy, which equals that guy. So if they're telling us the length from here to here is Q, then what's each one of these guys? Well, each one of these guys is going to be Q, the whole thing divided by 1, 2, 3. So each one of these is going to be Q divided by 3. So Q over 3, Q over 3, Q over 3. Now you don't have to write it out three times. All you got to know is one of them is Q over 3. When we laid out the problem at the beginning, we knew that this guy was equal to that guy. So if that's Q over 3, that guy is Q over 3. It has to be. So again, we just solve for the first part of the second question. That's Q over 3. Well, what's the length from A to E? Let's take a look at this thing. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Qs over 3. So this becomes 5 times Q over 3, which is 5 Q over 3. So the length from A to E is 5 Q over 3. Again, this becomes super powerful because this is applies for any number they put put on there for Q. So for example, if they had, let's say this was 12, okay, if that was 12, that would have meant Q, the length from there to there was 12, and this was broken into three equal segments, so each one of these would have been 4, right? Agreed. So if we plugged it into the question here, it would have been Q over 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4. 
12 divided by 3 is equal to 4, right? And then how many of these that we have? We have 5 of these guys. So 5 times 4 is 20. And if we plugged it in here, 5 times 12 over 3, well, 12 goes into, uh, 3 goes into 12 4 times, 5 times 4 is 20. And that's the power of solving problems with variables.